Team-based learning is a collaborative approach to the generation of knowledge that is based in social constructivism. Succinctly, it subscribes to the idea that no one is as smart as everyone. The more that knowledge is shared, the greater the potential for synthesis of ideas and the production of new knowledge, or at the very least, a greater common understanding. Team-based learning has been implemented in every discipline and has been demonstrated in classrooms of up to 350 students. Think, picture, peer instruction, team-based learning, they're all built on this theory of learning called social constructivism. The idea being that I've seen lots of heads nodding, so bear with me as I give you this sort of brief just, uh, definition. The idea being that a lot of the learning that we do at a very low level, like, hmm, I'm hungry, what should I do? Well, you know, when I eat, I don't feel hungry anymore. Like very basic, kind of the learning that we might share with animals, that kind of stuff. That can all be done individually. The higher level learning, the more abstract you get, language, uh, intellectual, abstract concepts, the intellectual tools of our disciplines, those things we learn much better, and some would say exclusively, in social relationships with others, because I can only use my own prior knowledge to make sense of the world. I can only build my understanding of the world based upon what I've experienced so far. And it's because I haven't experienced everything necessarily and have huge holes in it. So I will build a model of the world that fits what I've experienced so far. You have had different experiences. You have different prior knowledge. You're going to have different perspectives. So I might get to like some sort of 70% understanding of something. You're going to get to maybe 70%, but a different 70%. And it's the social contract of us having to like, well, what do we do? We're in conflict right now. I think it's this and you think it's that. But we have to kind of get along. So the social contract can force us to resolve that intellectual conflict and synthesize a new understanding. That's social constructivism in a nutshell, and that's basically the learning mechanism that I think is implied both in peer instruction and team based learning. The team based learning approach addresses the following components of the college and career readiness standards. Team-based learning consists of four specific components. We will explore each of these areas in more depth. Teams should be formed strategically in order to give all teams the greatest chance of success. In order to do this, team-based learning advocates a number of specific practices and considerations. Teams should consist of five to seven members and with relevant characteristics such as high achieving students or those with greater exposure to science content distributed as evenly as possible across teams. In order to do this, team-based learning advocates intentionally and strategically assigning students to teams and discourages allowing students to form their own teams. Instead, it is recommended that instructors develop meaningful criteria by which team membership can be decided. Evolve, groups of people evolve, group relationships evolve in somewhat predictable ways over time. And you know, at the very beginning phase of a group's life is uh, all of our intellectual, or a great many of our intellectual resources are focused on social matters. Like, what's, who are you? Uh, what, are you sarcastic or are you really a jackass? You know, what's, what's, what's funny here? What's going to be offensive here? What's, how can I disagree without being labeled as disagreeable? Like, that's, what, that's why like, cocktail parties are cocktail parties, because it's such a painful, awkward time in the life of the group. That's what parlor games were invented. That's what board games were invented, to give us a task to focus on, to use our minds. We can be collecting the social data while we're laughing and playing cards. But the point is that that's called the orientation phase of the group's life. And eventually we figure out what our place is, and oh, well, you really just have a really good sarcastic sense of humor. I like that, that's fine. Um, and we, we kind of all find our place in the group, and then that frees up those intellectual resources to more complicated problem solving abilities. But if you mix everybody back up, throw them into new teams, back to the orientation phase. 
Readiness assurance is a five-step process that takes place at the beginning of each course module in order to make sure students have the knowledge they need to complete and benefit from application activities. These steps include pre-reading, individual testing, team testing, appeals, and a clarifying lecture. Prior to coming to class, relevant study materials must be assigned to students. These may include textbook chapters, journal articles, videos, or podcasts. A brief multiple choice quiz is given to individuals in order to assess for understanding of the preparation materials. After submitting individual tests, members take the exact same test again as a team and must come to an agreement on answers. Teams should get immediate feedback on answers, such as with scratch-off forms called IFATs, which indicate a correct answer by revealing an asterisk. After completing the team test, teams may be given the opportunity to appeal questions which they felt were misleading by making a case for why they believe an answer is correct which was marked as incorrect. The appeal should be written by the team with a clear statement of the argument and supported by evidence from the readings. Uh, a couple of things about appeals. Uh, they have to be written. You can't just stand up and yap at you. Uh, they can only come from teams, not individuals. And if you decide to grant an appeal, like, you know what, that's, that's right, I, that question was poorly worded, or, God, I never really thought of it that way, but that piece of evidence actually shines new light on it, I'm going to grant that. Only the team that appealed that question gets those points. Because otherwise, they'd go, you appeal question one, you appeal question two, you appeal question three. Um, and then the, the last thing that I really recommend is have them write the appeals, and it's, it's really fun to listen to them write the appeals. I was standing next to a teacher, uh, and we were listening to this group like, ah, how should we word this appeal? Well, on this page, well, blah, blah, And he just leaned over to me and he whispered, and he said, they're learning more writing out this appeal than they learned in the entire rest of the test. But uh, the, I strongly recommend that the, the appeals are in writing and you pick them up and you carry them out of class, go off to your office where it's safe, yeah. right? And then look them over and then announce them either uh, by email is a great way to do it. Team one appeal like doing this, I decided to grant it, blah, blah, blah. Because if you try to uh, like address them right there in class, the student's blood is already up. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. they've thought about it, they've talked about it, they've been told that they were wrong, and <laughs> they're, they're unionized, right? And so they will not take no for an answer. The readiness assurance test not only holds students accountable for coming to class prepared, but also allows instructors to assess which material is well understood by the class as a whole and which material requires further clarification. By targeting material that is not well understood, instructors can maximize the effectiveness of instructional time. Once students possess a foundational knowledge and readiness has been assured, teams may be assigned activities which ask for an application of that knowledge to a specific problem. Team-based learning guides the design of these exercises around the four S's. According to team-based learning, one of the worst assignments to give a group is a collaborative paper or presentation project. The nature of such assignments, with different topics and tasks allocated to each person, leads to members becoming specialists in a very narrow section of information and minimizes sharing of knowledge between team members. The individualization of this method of teamwork also results in unequal experiences for team members as some will do more work, better work, or harder work than others. The problems that teams solve should be tangible or concrete. Avoid abstractness. Problems should focus on the application of information from the study and lecture materials. Good application exercises generally involve making a decision as a team from a large amount of complex information supported by a considered rationale for that choice. Problems should involve a choice between clear alternatives. Examples might include, which of these is the best street corner in Houston to sell hot dogs? Or, given information in this case study, which is the most likely diagnosis? It is not necessary for there to be one correct answer, as teams will also be responsible for generating rationales for their choices. 
All teams should work on the same problem. This allows for inter-team comparisons of answers, essentially turning the class into a team of teams working towards greater understanding. All teams should report their decisions at the same time in order to avoid groupthink. Disagreements between and even within teams are to be expected and encouraged. Conflicting answers can form the basis for fruitful class discussions as teams attempt to challenge each other's answers and justify the correctness of their own answers to each other. So groups have to make a specific choice. They have to all be working on the same problem. It has to be a significant problem in the sense, like a, this is where the scenario case-based kind of this has to this has to be where the concept can be put to use. This is the application that you want your students to do. This is where students are making decisions in your discipline that you want to teach your students to make. Um, this is where the cognitive apprenticeship is really fostered. And then the last thing is, if possible, this isn't always possible. Simultaneous reporting is the fourth S. And it doesn't have to be these. It can be clickers. A lot of people use clickers in team-based learning. Um, but simultaneous reporting is important because, I mean, there's that drama moment, right? You're like, the hell is B? What the hell? Um, but if we said, what do you say? D, 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 D. But maybe you guys said A. Maybe A is right. But if we say D, D, like, yeah. We said D2, answer drift. You know, you get answer drift. So what you want to do is you want to have all the answers reported simultaneously so you can explore the differences between them and not get the answer. Receiving feedback from peers can be an important part of the learning process. Feedback can be submitted to instructors who are able to anonymize comments prior to passing them along to the recipients. Feedback may be as simple as stating one thing valued about a team member and one thing requested, or may take the form of sophisticated rubrics and five-point Likert scales. Feedback should not only be provided at the end of semester as a way for evaluating team members' individual contributions, but also at midpoints through the semester so that students have an opportunity to incorporate and implement suggestions. As mentioned earlier, Team-based learning can be used to address and integrate a number of skills in the college and career readiness standards, both specific to science as well as cross-disciplinarily. In addition to providing a novel and engaging way to teach science content supported by the college and career readiness standards, the very structure of team-based learning can be used to teach less tangible skills, such as professional collaboration and incorporating constructive criticism in order to revise a position. These skills may be difficult to address in a purely lecture-based teaching style. Mm -hmm.